Hi folks, um, here we go again. We'll have Dual Shamar here. He's been down here in this pen. And uh, I gotta tell you the big we improvement. You can't call him Abdul, his name is Blue. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Blue <laughs> has moved down here. And he's uh, by himself, as you can see. And I got a place where I can hang him. And so he gets to stand there for a couple hours a day hanging walking in circles and then I can tell by the tracks he's not walking as much as he was but a big deal I noticed is he's not grinding his teeth anymore so he's starting to let down from the nerve thing and the thing I think we all should know about horses is that they like to he can see the other horses here but he can't touch them and horses like to see a long distance it makes them feel better I think that's why horses in in stalls that can't see a long distance get pretty darn twitchy I'm the same way but anyway this is where he's at now and then I'll eventually put him back with the string and I'll move him around to these different corrals so the tough horses can knock the hell out of him and the other ones can make his friends and whatever they're gonna do but today I want to do groundwork with him in a flag so that's where we're at Once again, if you would, watch his, watch the animal start. You know, all I'm going to do is babble, so pay attention to the horse and see if you can read what he's thinking, because that's kind of our job, is to be aware of where the horse is at mentally all the time. And I did want to tell you that Deb went to her exam the other day with the heart doctor and they scoped her and uh, give her a cocktail of some kind and <laughs> said she got the green light so she don't have to go back for six months. So we just want to thank everybody again for all their prayers and thoughts because man, I'll tell you, I'm a big believer in that. And then she's doing, she's kicking over her head so we're in good shape. I think that's it, all the latest news. You need to know he's already he, he's already done groundwork and I already told you Jeremy started him and did a hell of a good job but what I'm going to do now is check out his groundwork and see if it's flighty or if his head's low and not bothered because I, I don't want to he's been groundwork to death I think because the lady was afraid afraid to ride that's all there is to it like this I like to put him in my arena because if he sells out and he trips over these poles he'll fold up like a lawn chair and that'll make him start to pay attention like that right there so I'll ask him with an open hand and incidentally for those of you that do groundwork my belief is that when you hold the lead rope with your left hand to give direction it should be the same length as when you're holding the rein same place, here or here. You don't walk with the horse, because the horse is leaving if you walk with the horse. So now, I can send him, and if I need to bump him, I can bump and then give it back. If you watch his right hind now, he's got to not crowd me, but stay inside this circle. So he's free moving. I'm going to give him a little bit more room. This is one reason you have a portable arena. 
He seems pretty light on the lead rope. He doesn't. He's not leaning he on. Is. He's really light. So, you know, he's had a lot of groundwork. And the word light is true, but this is what I wanted to see. See, on a loose rein, he's sticking his nose to the outside. And when I bump him, I want him to stick his nose to the inside, but don't run over me. That's the left side. It's overkill because he wants to come in. So there's groundwork and then there's groundwork. Now I'll switch directions. Once again, he really would like to push me around. you'll hear the noise of him hitting a pole. When you switch hands, I'll do it in front of you. Under, over. So the tail of the rope goes under and then you switch. He just started to jog and I shut him down. And something I'm real adamant about when I'm working with people outside is you watch a horse go down a dip and come up the other side and a whole lot of times they want to jog or trot or run up and down. And some people think it's cool. I'll guarantee you what you're doing is teaching them a really, really bad habit. When you're walking, they walk. Zero tolerance. If you're jogging, that's fine. But going down and out of a dip, you should walk. Because you'll end up coming out of the dip with a horse bucking. Now, one of his deals is stopping. So I'll raise my hand, disengage his hindquarter, and just have him stand. Now I need him to back up. There's that hooking on thing. Now he's got to stay there. That's his job. So I'm going to tell him to relax, which you can tell where we're at so far. The skull made it, but he's still nervous. Now, I'm going to ask him if you go to my left. I will pressure, direction. Believe me, this isn't me. This is horse already knows this. Changing hands. This is done with an open hand. When, when groundwork is correct, you do it with an open hand. You don't have a big grip on the rope. Now he's supposed to stay there. Have him back up. Now, we've already been here. Remember when I roped him? Just lower your head. But I think I think uh, Stevie Wonder could see that he's starting to let down. He's starting to relax a little bit. He's also not all sweaty. That's right. And something else that he's showing me right now. Some people say he's all, they're always looking around. He's always looking everywhere. Well, let him look. That's what prey animals do. It's the feet that can't move. I let a horse bend their head, look wherever they want. Here's a raven coming in behind him. There's dogs up the deal. <laughs> a raven and a dog. So I don't mind if a horse moves their head. I just don't want them moving their feet. So now I'll get the flag and then we'll find out what reality is. He's got to be good about a flag just like a rope. And it's just like the lariat. I'm just sacking him out, that's all I'm doing. In the old days they called it slicker broke. Well, I haven't had a slicker in years and I'm kind of proud of that. <laughs> but uh, on that note, you know, we've had some, a lot of rain this winter and I had to cancel a bunch of people because of the weather, but looks like it's starting to line out, so for you folks that I canceled, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a hold of you. I promise. 
So here's the flag. So Mr. Dorrance, he said to make an outline with the flag. Outline the horse. There's the blind spot. Now he's walking faster. Now, here's the horse being. See me bumping his head, watch. That's disengaging him, and then he runs into my arena fence. This is the right side. Here's the outline. You just outline the horse. And just as a little trivia, don't stand in front of him when you're doing this with a bronco. You will end up with a broken something. And that was the blind spot underneath his chin. Right under here, they can't see. And that's why when people, they jerk down, they say something like, whoa! Or they have those big snaps. Yeah, the big heavy snaps and hit them in the head with it. Well, if you get a chance, you hit yourself in the head someday with one of those snaps. You'll find out how good that feels. All right, so now the, rea the real deal on the flag. He has to be able to stand with the noise. He has to be able to take it. So get a flag that makes noise. Yeah, if you get some little skirt girl scarf that whispers in the wind, you're not getting anything done. Even if it's pretty colors? This is, we're talking Walmart. There's a grommet in the corner. Cut the piece out as big as you want. <laughs> That's your flag. Isn't the length of the flag really important too? It seems like some of them are awfully short. Like oh, you the don't want to. The handle? Yeah. Well, yeah. Like you're going to get in trouble if the horse kicks out. Now, Buck showed this to us because Ray Hunt used to use them. And I already told you, I only met Ray one time. But Buck showed me how to make these. And it's a aerial off of a dune buggy. Or it's an antenna. Metal it's an antenna. antenna. And so you take a torch and heat it up and bend it back for the handle, wrap it in tape, and then make this sliding hook on the end, wrap that in tape. And um, I've had this one probably 30 years. I had six of them, and they're scattered from Pacific to Atlantic. Now you can use different colors of vet wrap on the handle if you want oh, to get fancy. Yeah. If you're bragging. See why I have my men in my arena? That way I don't have to go all the way around the county. But here's the thing. You saw me rub the horse with the flag. All right, that is true. But this horse has to handle the flag moving. It has to handle it. When I'm done, I'll be sitting on its back, flogging the ground in the air with this flag. Well, this is how you get started. But I'm just thrilled he's still in the country. Because, you know, the first video you saw of him, I did not do this. <laughs> there is a sequence involved here. Now my rope is loose, my lead rope. So you get the feet moving. My left hand, if I feel threatened by him, all I gotta do is this. I don't feel threatened by him. I'm doing left eye, right eye, incidentally. Now, here's the deal, right here. Right eye, left eye. You also probably wouldn't go over into the right eye standing on the left side right away. Not on the bronco. <coughs> So there you go. Now here's the blind spot. For a split second he can't see this. Then it comes out the other side. Well that's life. That's the way it's going to be. If he's around long enough I'll be, he'll be packing a saw bug. So back to my old deal. 
it's the height of the skull. And, and remember, when you're doing this, contemplate life. Think <laughs> about the sandwich you're going to have. Bologna? Think about the time you broke down, busted the tongue on the wagon. Don't watch the horse and th react to every move they make. Because I've, I have to carry an air sickness bag when I did a clinic about groundwork. Because what would happen, somebody would <laughs> go like this and they'd go, oh my God. And they'd be watching the horse. Quit it. <laughs> if you smell burning flesh, you'll know he left the country. Because your hand will be burnt. Well, he ain't left the country. But you can't sneak around on a deal like this. You got to be smart about putting it to him, but you don't do the just the rubbing only. This is only part of the deal. So that's where he's headed. He's going to get flagged until his skull comes down. And I'm going to guess it'll be maybe, maybe three sessions. And my sessions are 10 minutes long because I'm lazy. No, the fact is, after 10 minutes, they will have decided one way or the other. In other words, he hasn't decided yet. Well, when he goes and stands in that pen again, the next time I see him, I'm heading down to the ranch this weekend, and the next week sometime I'll catch him and do this again and see where he's at. Because I don't know who wrote it down, but I'm a firm believer that you can't train a horse, but you can outlast him. He's just full of bad habits. He's not like I'm training a colt to learn to carry a human. He's already been there. He just formed a lot of bad habits. And the poor lady, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not hard on her because I get it. There's people that are afraid. Well, you got to make a decision. But you can see how hard I'm hanging on to him now. I don't have to be anywhere. I'm not that important. Anyway. I want to make one observation in the way that you go about stuff like this is, and it's pretty much anything, like when you're saddling a horse for the first time using the tarpon flag, is you're, you're methodical and you're very direct. You're not creeping around the horse because that makes them more nervous. That's like a predator stalking its prey. So you're, you're not abrupt but yet you're not timid. Is that? Very profound. I thought so. But I just wanted to I mention that because a lot of people, a they're lot either- A people treat this like a weapon. They go after the horse like you're gonna kill him. Right. And so the horse reacts. That's what horses do. It's called fight or flight. Right. And then other people creep around because they don't want to scare the horse, what yeah. scares the horse. And uh, if you have him up against a fence doing this, and you don't give them too many choices, they're going to come at you. Yeah. You got to remember that. That's why I put them in my arena. It's fight or flight. So if you take away flight, they're going to do fight. Yep. And uh, so he's he's getting things done. He knows not to step on these logs. <laughs> and he also, for my personal opinion, is I don't care. In other words, if he was really dripping sweat and all that stuff like he did the other day, well, it'd be a different story, but I'm telling you, he's doing fine. Yeah, there's no sweat on his neck this time. I mean, yeah. it it ha it sprung out really fast without a lot of exertion the last two sessions. Now, the, see the height of his skull? Okay, so that's, that's what I'm getting at. I'm now, he up. also just licked and chewed, like, oh my in God. a good way. Not in that... I missed it. Oh. You missed it. Oh, my. <laughs> I'll well, show I'll, it to you on the I'll video. Part, start paying more attention. Yeah. Anyway, that's the way that this horse, I believe, needs it. Now, you get some cold-jawed, dead-sided dink, you might have to flog him to death with this just to get him to worry about it. <laughs> He's not that kind of horse. Right. He's a very spoiled, bad habit horse. Right. He's changing his mind because he's finding out that I really don't want to trip over those logs. Right. If you heard it in horse language, when he hits him, he's going, ow, 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 ow. Ow, ow, ow. That ain't my fault. All you got to do is do this. Now there's one more thing I think you need to address, and that's, this can be done too much. If you get a horse so dull to any kind of stimulation, then you have a horse that like won't get out of the way to save himself. That's true. It's called a halter horse. 
<laughs> I don't know. I've seen them where they that uh, donkey challenge or wherever it is, and, and they drag a 50-foot tarp and then cover the horse up and the rider, and everybody applauds. I really don't think that's worth applause. No, this is worth applause. Right. But there again, I don't have a big cloud of dust, so it's not like people come for miles to see this stuff. But I just do what I do. But I guess my point is, like Deb says, there's an extreme where you can carry it to. And I've noticed all the horses that they can cover with a 50-foot tarp, none of them ever have collection. Well, I just thought I'd mention that. Anyway, <laughs> thanks a lot, and I'll see you when I get back from the ranch, and I'll tell you how it went. Adios. Bye-bye.